Hi, Cliff Brake from Beck Systems. I'd like to do a quick demo of Lazy Vim. Lazy Vim is a NeoVim setup powered by the Lazy Package Manager. So Lazy is the latest and greatest Vim package manager. It loads, loads things on demand rather than all up front, so you get fast startup times. So let's do a quick demo in the in a Go repo. This is a simple IoT code base. So. Oh, one other thing I'll show you is, is how I'm currently starting this. So I set up a parallel Vim config using the nvim app name variable, and this tells tells uh, Vim to look in dot config lazy Vim for the config rather than the standard dot config nvim location. So this is available in NeoVim 0.9.0. This nvim app name. So let's. Um, Notice when Vim starts, it starts very fast, 16 milliseconds. You can type L, it shows you all the plugins. Most of them aren't loaded, so if you use something like NeoTree, then you'll notice this plugin will get loaded. So if you toggle NeoTree, notice NeoTree is now in the loaded list. When you type the leader key, you get a nice help screen that shows you the shortcuts. So you don't have to remember all the shortcuts. You can explore as you go, and then it, the ones you tend to look, use over time are the ones you'll learn. So notice it says space can use, be used to find files. So let's open a few files. Recently been adding Shelly device support to Simple IoT, so let's open a few of those files. Shelly IO. And let's add a point file too. You can go between buffers with capital H and capital L. I like that a lot. I like tabs at the top. The status line at the bottom is perfect. It just really shows us a lot of nice information. Our git branch, the file we're on, the function we're in, last command, and, and so on. Where we're at in the file. If we Hit the star key to, to search. Notice it highlights all the matches, but it also shows the number of matches in our current match. So we can see this is incrementing as we go down through the file. So now we know we're on the last ma match. We'll wrap around to the beginning. See, language server works great. Notice I'm jumping in to source of files. Um, if I want to see where all files, uh, a symbol is used, I can just go to references and it'll show me where all it's used. If I type leader ss, leader search symbols, shows me all the symbols in this file. So this provides a nice outline of what's in this file, this module. And I can quickly jump to a, a certain function. If I want to go to the run function, I just type run. Boom, I'm there. So this is a Go, Go program. And let's look at a, an example of C code. So this is a Zephyr project. It's written in C, and it's a very large project. Or I should say relatively large. So let's find, let's look at the USB CDC sample. So to find that, we'll type a leader, leader, and type samples, USB, CDC, and we go to the main module. So notice the fuzzy finder, we can very quickly get to where we want to go. Again, code navigation works perfectly with the Clang D language server. And quickly move around, we can see where things are used, and we can also um, do code formatting. So notice if, if we make a change and we save it, it reformats our code for us using the Clang formatter. So how Clang D works is it uses a, let's see if we can find this file, build. And then 
compile commands. So when when uh, Zephyr builds, it it generates this compile commands, which is a wrapper around the build, and it logs every file it compiles along with the arguments. And this this gives cl the Clang D language server information on what all what all files are used. In that way, it doesn't have to index everything. It can just index the files that are actually used to build the project. And th this is all integrated into the Zephyr build, so it's it's set up out of the box, ready to go. Another thing Zephyr provides is a Clang format. So the Zephyr project has established So the way this, this works is the Zephyr project has defined a format and and you can use this with the out of the box, you don't have to set up anything, it's just ready to go. So I'll show you oh one other thing that's very useful in the uh, Let's see, let's open up that file again. Samples, USB, CDC, main. Let's say we want to make a change, but we we know this file has not been auto-formatted. We, we just may want a bug fix. And let's say we want to change this to 128. But we don't want to reformat the file because we know it could cause a bunch of changes that we don't we don't we only want to change one line so we can turn off auto formatting with leader UI and toggle format on save and now if let's just make a we save this notice the format wasn't changed and we can turn that back on with leader UF and save it now it is changed so being able to turn off auto formatting on the fly especially if you're if you're working in open source projects and you have to tweak things, you don't want to reformat the whole file. So the last thing, let's look at my config. So this is where I set up the, uh, the changes I've made. Let's see. So again, I'm, I'm, all, I'm loading an alternate config with .config lazy vim. And let's look at the changes I've made. So they're in plugins. So the main thing I'm doing is in Mason, you can, Mason is a way to install language servers, code formatters, and, and other programming assistance. You can do this interactively by just clicking on something, hitting I, but if we load our Vim config on another computer, this isn't set up. So we really like to have this declaratively specified so that we can just, it'll do it automatically. So that's what you do with this bit of Lua code. It specifies for the Mason, Mason plugin, ensure these modules are installed. Very nice. The only other change I've made to date is I trying to get the Go language server to automatically import plugins. So that I added some code to lazy.lua and it's not quite working yet, but um, hopefully we can get this figured out. So that's lazy vim in a nutshell. Works very good. Highly recommend it. And again, the defaults are almost perfect for, for what I needed. So good stuff. Check it out.